Baseball again, Ernie Pasternicki. Throughout the early 1950s, Ernie enjoyed a successful pitching career at Seattle University. As a member of the Chieftains baseball squad, Ernie recorded over 40 career wins against only one loss. The Mariners need you now, Ernie. Uh, he pitched uh, 25 complete games, recorded four no-hitters, three of those coming during the 1953 season to set a single-season record for Seattle University. He also led the NCAA in strikeouts during the same season. In 1954, he earned the Seattle University Inspiration Award. After leaving Seattle University, Ernie spent five years in the Chicago Cubs organization, then worked 15 years for Boeing and 25 years for Spider Staging. His son, Cliff followed in the family of footsteps, signing a contract with the Kansas City Royals and now a scout for the Royals in the eastern part of the country. Please welcome Ernie Pasternicki. Oh, okay. Whew, I don't know what to say. This is, all I can say is give me a ball and just point me to home plate. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I know what the hell I can do there, I can knock them dead. I want to thank everyone for this award, or anyone making this award possible to me. I am so proud that I was ever, that I ever came to Seattle University. I got two guys that I'd like to point out that made this so much possible for me. John and Ed O'Brien, we played ball so much together all over back east that I no longer felt that they were twins. I thought I was a triplet. <laughs> I mean, no matter where we went, we were winners. And that's the way we felt. And that's the way I felt when I came to Seattle University. When I put that uniform on, I didn't think anybody was gonna beat us. And I was representing the finest school going. And that's why I came out here. I changed my mind when I had a chance to go to a different college back east, but no, it would have been the biggest mistake I ever made. I am so happy that I came here. I love the school, I love the faculty, and everybody and all the fans and the players that I've ever played with, it's, it's beyond words. I'm sitting, on, I'm, I'm sitting on side of a gentleman that caught every game that I ever pitched. I feel like I'm in a ball game again. But anyway, I graduated in 54, got my degree in BA in economics, and then I wound up signing with the Chicago Cub organization and played with f about five years, and then the kids started coming, so I stopped and hung it up. So, but then I got five sons, and then my number three son came along, uh, Cliff, and uh, he was good enough to go to, uh, to college and graduate, and uh, I don't even want to mention the name of the school. You're probably wondering, how did he get to that school? I'm going to say it, BYU. <laughs> but you know what? They asked him how many times to turn Catholic. He says, no way. So anyway, when he graduated, he got drafted by the Kansas City Royals and reported to the Royals. He played for the Royals. He was a third baseman behind George Brett, and uh, which is something that you don't want to ever do. <laughs> so on odd basis there, I think it might have helped him retire a little sooner than he wanted to. So on that basis there, he uh, got a job scouting for the Seattle Mariners for about six years and uh, stayed with them. In fact, some of you people will recall just last week when the Chicago, uh, uh, when the uh, St. Louis team was in here. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the left-hander that pitched. Uh, oh my God, his name slipped to my mind. Who? Huh? Sean Estes. Sean Estes, right. That was my son's. He signed him as the number one draft choice for the Mariners. And then after six years, then he moved on, and he's got a job now currently scouting, living in Florida, uh, scouting for the Kansas City Royals. And... Uh, like I say, he right now has a son also that is one hell of a ball player, and I guarantee you, you're going to see him up in the majors. His name is Tyler, and it's Tyler Pasternicki. And uh, 
he is going to be there because right now he's at that Brandon school, I guess the finishing school where Sean Apoa and all them go in Florida. That's where he's at. So, like I say, it's, I guess maybe it runs in the family a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I, I want to thank, like I say, once again, Ed and John for making it possible for me to come here. And it's the, it was the greatest decision I ever made. And I'm happy to be here and to, resent, uh, to represent my school and the colors that we stand for and everything else. I got a good education. And I met a lot of beautiful people here that I will never, ever, ever forget. And every time I turned around, there was a couple of guys that I always used to see. Not only was it my catcher, Ed Gary, but there was a guy by the name of John Kelly and a guy by the name of Bob Ward. You know, they were right there waiting to take my job. <laughs> so we had a good team, a good, good rapport. And as you can see, we did a good job. And you know, we had a hell of a competition with the University of Washington at that time. Incidentally, Bob Hubricks is in the audience. He was there when I beat him, uh, beat him that first game. <laughs> but anyway, we beat him every time we played him. I never lost to the University of Washington. I, and I know there's probably a lot of people here that don't like Washington State either. I never lost to Washington State either. <laughs> So, on that basis there, I'm so happy to be here and proud. I thought I got everything when I got the inspirational award. I says, what more could I ask for them this college? They treated me like a king. And now they, they're slapping me with this award. I'm happy. Thank you all. Thank you.